So this video is going to be how to uh, unbrick your DSM to fix it. If you had the DSM 5.02, I think it is, or 5.2, uh, for the Synology uh, DS112J, that's the one we're going to be fixing today. Um, I might make some mistakes here and there uh, and stumble a little bit because I'm doing this on the fly fast. I got a lot of junk going on and I just thought I'd make this really quick because people were asking. Um, somebody will probably do a nice cleaned up version of this, but at least this gets it out there fast. Um, anyways, uh, so we're connected um, to the network. The Synology NAS is on. You can cycle it off once and then turn it back on. So turn it off, unplug the power once, plug the power back in, turn the Synology back. Uh, box back on, leaving the hard drive in it, the original drives. Don't worry about it. Your data is going to be okay. Um, so that's pretty much it. It's going to boot up, give it a couple minutes. You know, it takes time for it to do its dance. And then um, that's pretty much where you're going to be at. Um, then once you're uh, done booting that thing up and it's connected to the network and you're all good, uh, go ahead and download Synology Assistant if you haven't already. Also, there'll be a doc that'll be attached to this, uh, a link to this that'll have all the... Um, uh, code that you need to, to put in there in the terminal uh, when we're making the changes. And then I'd also download, before you even begin, download the newest um, DSM that's on there, uh, which you can get from Synology. Make sure you get the right model um, that you're picking in the right DSM. That's in their download section and download the uh, DSM that you need. Um, this one is right here. It's the DSM underscore DS112J4458.pat. So you uh, start up at the Synology Assistant, and that'll begin here in a second. And you're going to find this, which is the problem. It uh, comes up uh, that it's migratable, and also it has no model number. So what we're going to do is select that one. Make sure if you have got multiple units that you're picking the one that says migratable and has no model number. And we're going to hit install. Uh, it's going to ask for the path for the file. And we're going to browse for this thing. And let me grab it. Now what's going to happen, and you can put in whatever password you want. I just got some random junk I'll put in here. Um, let's see. Amen. Uh, go ahead and you might as well put your correct stuff in. It'll save you some steps. I don't think it even matters, to be honest with you. Um, but put it in there anyways. I did do this. I wanted to statically assign the same IP address that it was previously using. Um, this box, even though I'm doing this twice on this box, just for testing purposes, to brick it again and do it. Um, I have this information in there, and then hit finish. What will happen? It's going to try and fail, like we all know it has been doing. Um, but once it fails, it automatically opens up a Telnet port where it's going to allow us to Telnet in, make the changes that we need, and then it'll allow us to uh, update the DSM. So this, we got to wait a little bit here, but hang tight. Like I said, I'm not going to edit any of this, so it's going to be what it is. Yeah, it was really too bad about this whole thing, kind of stunk. I mean, people that had production stuff going on must have really been bumming. I, I primarily use these things as small backups and remote VPNs in um, here and there for people and just, you know, utility box. Um, but, you know, it's crazy that they bricked a bunch of boxes. So here we go. Um, unable to recognize the system model. There it is. And saying that it's open up to, uh, port 23. I'm going to go ahead and hide this. You can close it or hide it. It doesn't really matter. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and leave that up and running. Uh, here's where you're going to open up your Telnet utility. If you are on Windows, you're going to want it. All the, the process is the same, just different application that you're going to use for Telnet. Um, Windows, you can download uh, Putty Tel. Uh, just do a Google search for Putty and um, uh, P-U-T-T-Y and you'll find uh, the link and all you need is putty tell then launch it and then put the IP address in that you uh, typed in before on uh, the, for the uh, NAS and that's where you're gonna hit the telnet uh, choose telnet as the connection um, and then uh, put the IP address in and it'll give you a login screen which we're gonna get to too on a Mac 
you can go into applications, zip down to utilities, and go into your terminal. Um, and then once in terminal, you can type in your telnet and then hit the space and then put your thing in your IP. Here's my telnet. Okay, now here's where you are going to want to put your password in. Now, when the device reboots and you cycle it in the power, you can, and it goes into that telnet mode only after you've rebooted it. The first 24 hours, the password is available. Um, and then after that, you change the password accordingly for every 24 hours that goes by. But since we just cycled it, we should be okay. Um, the first password for the first 24 hours after a reboot, and it's in this uh, state, is 101-0101. So we're going to copy that off or type it in, whatever you flitch about. I'm going to copy and paste stuff just for kicks, um, and you guys can put in whatever you want. Um, oops. Login is root, R-O-O-T, all lowercase, password, put this in there. And now we're logged in. Um, and uh, so I'm in the thing. And now we want to go ahead and do all the commands that are on this um, uh, doc that you're going to have. Okay, here's the other explanations. After 24 hours for the for the password, and you can't go in, then then you can do the next uh, number, which is just add a two, uh, 0201 in that, and then. 101 but if you're rebooting the thing it should reset it all the way back to the first um, 24 hour period after a reboot um, now we're going to do some commands here and get into this thing um, I'm just going to do it from scratch although I can just type it in but at least you guys will see what's going on where we're getting it from and where we're putting it in um, so it can help everybody even first timers you can just do this if you want um, Okay, so we're putting these commands in and then hitting enter after each one. This one will just give you a, a hold screen waiting, waiting for the, um, the rest of the content. You'll get this. And then go ahead and copy this stuff in. Now here, once this is pasted in there, is where you're going to hit the hold down the control key, tap D. And then I had to do it twice until I got the end, uh, until I got the command prompt again. There's my prompt. Um, then I hit enter just to bring it down so it's less confusing so you can see what's going down. Um, so now we're done with that. And now we can go ahead and let's do these, which is we're just going to change some directories here. But same one with this. Okay, so it's waiting once again for us to put the, the um, uh, to paste our stuff in here. Now don't forget, this is a big one, so start at the very beginning and just get what we need. So I'm going to go down and grab all this junk. Just past that last quote. That puts it all in there. We pasted it in. Now, once again, we hit our uh, Control D. I'm going to do it twice. Just, I don't know if you have to, but hey, I know it works, and, and that's the way I roll. Okay. Now, we should be able to run the Assistant again. And now you'll see that we have the same results migratable, but you'll notice that the model number is now there. That is going to allow us to, guess what, install that downloaded DSM that we downloaded from their website. So there's the DSM, the most recent one. And anything you want to put in there doesn't really matter. You can put your original stuff in if you want. Makes it faster in the long run. And that's it. Now it should install correctly. And once it's done installing, um, the device will reboot. It'll say coming back online. You got to wait a little bit for it. 
Um, once it's back up online, go ahead and go into the um, uh, log into the NAS with your credentials. All your stuff should be there, including your previous user credentials and everything else. Um, the only thing that did get, does get transferred over from when you're um, making changes of any sort when you're or in the beginning with the uh, IP address and the NAS's name, uh, and I think that's it. That's the only thing that actually gets written to it. It might change the admin password. I didn't even look. It's been a pretty uh, short time I've played with this. Um, so anyways, uh, it'll boot up when you're done uh, having it boot up, log in, uh, then go into the control panel and go and get your um, do a search for the newest DSM update. Don't don't worry, it'll actually install correctly now. The one that it auto loads, but that'll get you that um, OpenSSL uh, um, patch. So there you go, kids. And that was fun week in in ownership of Synology products this week. Um, so yeah, I'm driving around a lot of places that have these things that have stuffed into little offices and have to change these. At least they didn't do it any of the big units. Um, there's, I think, one rack station that does, but I'll wait it a couple more seconds so you can see what happens, but um, it's pretty straightforward from here. It pretty much um, boots up and then log in through the, your regular web interface and, and uh, finish up the uh, update, and you're golden. So uh, that's it. Take care.